As someone who's been a feminist for years, it is fantastic to finally start to see these young people that are in the public eye start to get called out for all of their nonsensical takes. They are consistently coming down with a pretty bad case of foot-in-mouth syndrome. And right now, it's Rachel Zegler who's playing Snow White in the upcoming very loose, I'm hesitant to even call it an actual adaptation of Snow White. They changed the fact that Snow White is not Snow White. It's closer to the snow that you would find on the sidewalk in New York City. So it's more like Snow Brown. The seven dwarfs are not the seven dwarfs. They're the seven magical creatures of all sexualities, races, ethnicities, and Prince Charming is not Prince Charming. He is Prince Friend Zoned or potentially Prince Cut from Movie. So we'll have to see about that. So right now, Rachel Zegler has been getting clowned on left, right, and center. And it all comes back to the fact that she did a bunch of interviews when trying to promote this movie, especially at D23 this last year. And a lot of those interviews are resurfacing. The things that she has been saying about Snow White are not the best. We have a lot of internet sleuths that are really diving into her old interviews of things that she said and how she has been trying to manipulate the audience. And she hasn't been completely truthful and forthcoming about how she has or has not been a Snow White fan. I think everybody would sit there and say, look... If she has not been a Snow White fan, but then she was cast in the role, it's okay for her to say that. She can come out and say, you know, when I actually auditioned and was cast for this, I was not super into the story of Snow White. But then after I realized that I might be getting this role, I went through and then I read all of the stories and I've watched the old movies and I've really dived headfirst into the deep end of what this property is. And now there's a healthy respect and love for the character. But instead, she didn't really do any of that. She just kind of took the opportunity to say, well, you know, I know the story and I watched it 15 years ago. And I have so many things wrong with this, and that's not how women are supposed to be, and that's not the representation that we're supposed to have, picturing the seven dwarfs. And at every turn, she's basically saying the character that she was chosen to portray, and be paid handsomely for that, by the way, is not good enough and they need to make some changes. Now, she is being called out for being a quote-unquote fake feminist by some people on TikTok. And there was one video in particular that had millions of views. So let's go ahead and let's just take a look. And after that, let's go back and let's actually take a look at all of the things that Rachel Ziegler has said that recently came back to the forefront of everybody's attention. So check this out. I could literally write a PhD thesis on the pseudo-feminism that is criticizing Disney princesses. Criticizing Disney princesses is not feminist. Not every woman is a leader. Not every woman wants to be a leader. Not every woman wants or craves power, and that's okay. Not every single woman on this earth needs to be striving to be put in the same bucket as all of the others and needs to strive to be a woman in power and to be that boss bitch and be the CEO of a company and hold power over other people and take what traditionally would be a man's role, that it's okay for women to do what they want. And that should be the idea of feminism. It shouldn't be the idea that is espoused so much for all of these Hollywood people that are sitting from their platform saying, if you're a woman, you should be trying to take the roles that are traditionally men. And if a masculine man comes along and wants to court you, you should turn him down because he's evil and we don't need no man. That is not what feminism should be about. Now, my mom was very much a feminist and she was a career driven woman. And what she had really explained to me is the idea of feminism for her generation was that it is okay if a woman wants to be career driven, just like it is okay if a woman wants to stay at home and make a family and be a homemaker, just like it's okay if a woman desires to be a seamstress as a profession, or it's also okay if a woman wants to be an auto mechanic or a race car driver. The idea is that a woman should be able to do whatever she wants. It should be more about lifting up women and making sure that they feel supported than the inverse, which is what we hear all the time, that instead of lifting up women, 
women. It should be about breaking down men. I love the fact that now we're starting to see some very serious backlash, especially for all of these young, ideologically driven people that are in Hollywood and have these abnormally large platforms. But let's go and let's take a look right now at some of the things that really led up to this TikTok having been made. You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White she's that is not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be, and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. So here we go again. This video clip was always so funny to me because while Rachel Ziegler was sitting there spouting her nonsense to this interviewer, Gal Gadot was just kind of sitting there almost like the mama feminist being like, yes, my dear, say all of the talking points that I've taught you. Say everything that you've rehearsed so the world knows that you're a feminist. And that's exactly what it seemed like because as soon as Rachel Ziegler was starting to go off a little bit and say, well, we actually changed the story, Gal Gadot hopped in very quickly and she was like, and by by the way, she's not being saved by any prince because once again, feminism, she don't need no man. And it just doesn't work. This was the first video that I saw and I really knew anything about Rachel Ziegler from. And I immediately knew that this movie was going to be in deep shit because of the way that she speaks about it. And because of the way that she is carrying herself when she's supposed to be acting like Snow White, like a princess, not like someone who is there to save the day. But let's go ahead and let's check out the next thing that came to my attention. I mean, you know, the, the original cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird, Super weird. weird. So we didn't do that this time. <laughs> It's so weird, it's so weird, it's so weird that we're telling the story of a princess who wants to meet Prince Charming and fall in love, and he's a complete creepy stalker when in reality he just saved the day because he actually liked her and wanted to pursue her. It is baffling to me the amount of damage that she's doing to this movie by these old interviews that she did at the D23 Expo some months ago. Because you have to keep in mind, she can't even go on an active press tour right now because of the strike. So if she even wanted to get out there and do an interview and try to course correct a little bit of what's going on, she wouldn't be allowed to because she's not allowed as an actress to go and do any interviews and any press. So she's just completely between a rock and a hard place. But the thing is, she put herself there. No, so no prince or a different kind of prince? We have a different approach to what I'm sure a lot of people will assume is a love story just because like we cast a guy in the movie, right. Andrew Burnap, great dude. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I think everyone's gonna have their assumptions about what it's actually going to be, but uh, it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. And whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, all of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But that's Hollywood, baby. The guy that's playing the male lead in this story, and we can't even call it a love interest because they made it pretty clear that he's not Prince Charming. He's just some dude who's in the friend zone hanging out with some lady. He might just get his role completely cut from the movie. Every single clip that I see makes me realize more and more how insufferable she is. And I really don't think she's gonna have a very long career. No studio in their right mind would want to hire Rachel Ziegler at this point, seeing the type of damage that she is doing to the Snow White movie. And here she is on the SAG after a picket line, demanding that she gets paid because she got to wear a dress and act in a movie. Check this out. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. I don't think Rachel Ziegler actually realizes how many people would willingly wear that Snow White dress for 18 hours a day for free, let alone to get paid for it. I always thought it was very odd that in show business, these actors and directors and everybody involved can work into their contract the idea of residuals. You get paid to do a job, but then once that job is all said and done, you get paid continually as long as it airs. That didn't really make sense to me, but even if Rachel Ziegler was a little bit Bit more tactful about how she approached this conversation, she wouldn't be getting so much hate as she is right now. She just came about it, and the way that 
that she spoke, she seemed so damn unlikable. And it should be rule number one of being a Disney princess, be likable. You want the audience to root for you. You want the crowds to root for you. And right now, the way that she's acting and the things that she is saying are not garnering her any fans at all. So time will tell how much damage she's actually doing to the Snow White movie. And I feel like Disney is probably looking at all of the stuff that's going on right now and they're starting to realize, oh shit, this is exactly what happens when we cast a main role in one of our movies, not because she loves the story and loves the character or loved this character when she was a kid, but because she checks a box for our diversity needs. So if you're still with me, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell so you know whenever the Gramcast is coming at you with a new video. Until next time, folks, I'll catch you later.